welcome back to the Fucking Tree Book Club. This week we are discussing Nevermore by Kelly Krieg. I don't know if you can see it as well in the picture, but I'm holding it up. This cover art is one of the reasons I actually got into this series originally because just you can kind of see it when you when the lighting is good. <laughs> it's hard to see, um, but there is script writing all across most of the book. It's just. And all of the covers for this series are actually really stunning. And there are two major things that drew me to this series and why I put it in the random basket. One, this cover art is just stunning. And like, no, don't judge a book by its cover. But like, cover art is really important for a book. If the cover art is really dull or really boring, or it's overly exciting and then the book lacks, like, the cover does encourage like or dislike. But I just, every time I pull out these books, I'm like, oh my goodness, these covers are gorgeous. I love these covers. Um, the other thing that really I like about this book is the underlying world of this book. And I'm going to get into that. But we have Nevermore by Kelly Creek. It is a trilogy. And this is a trilogy I will be doing videos for all three. Um, book two will be coming out in a couple weeks after Valentine's weekend. And then the third one, and then kind of a talk about the whole series will be the week after that. The, the second and third video will be coming out on mm, Thursdays. It'll be on Thursday, probably. Because <laughs> I'm still doing Lux, which um, video two is already up. Video three will be up next week. Um, but let's talk about book one of Nevermore. I'm going to say this now. There is not an easy way to talk about Nevermore without some spoilers. So if you don't like spoilers, this is one of those few series where if you don't like spoilers, read the book first. Don't watch until you've read it because it's very hard to describe this book without spoilers. Um, but I'm going to try my best, but I will admit there might be some like, oh, I'm revealing things about their characters or characters that come much later in the book, but it's just really hard to not spoil this because of how complex and strange and weird and dramatic this series is. Um, the first thing I will say is this is so, there's so much happening in this book. Um, I gave it four out of five stars. The loss of a star comes from the fact that if you took out the fact that there is Edgar Allan Poe, that is a big part of this. Edgar Allan Poe's lore and mythos. I don't know which word is better in this case. Um, but if you took out like the stuff about Edgar Allan Poe, this fantastical, supernatural world that's occurring, I would hate this book. I would hate this book. This book is a bunch of cliches. It is. And that doesn't make it bad. And that doesn't make it like something I'm not gonna read. But if it had just been that, I probably wouldn't have read it. But the thing is, here's your here's your main thing. You've got a goth boy and a preppy, peppy cheerleader. They get partnered for a class project. <laughs> now, I don't know what high school this is, and I don't know what high school other people have gone to, but can anyone, okay, if this has happened to you in the comments, like, I wanna know, because I genuinely don't believe, like, I don't find this believable. Do romances actually spark from class projects? Do they? I want to know. Do class projects come from school projects? Because that is the idea here. They, um, these two random people get put together on a project. It's not their choice. It's, they didn't choose to be partners. Like, the teacher did that whole, oh, I'm gonna randomly partner everyone, and it's the preppy pink girly cheerleader and the goth boy. <laughs> Like, you couldn't have picked two more drastic cliches to put together. And then, of course, it's gonna spark a romance. Tell me, does this happen in real life? Because I've never heard of this happening in real life. Also, so the character, so the two characters are, and I'm sorry if anyone else pronounces them differently, I pronounce it Varen and Isabel. If that is not how it's pronounced, okay. <laughs> to each his own, I guess. Varen and Isabel. Varen is this mysterious goth boy. He is like every high school goth cliche. <laughs> like, I don't know much about what really go, like, what really goes into, like, people who are goth, but, like, this person was following the cliches and stereotypes of goth. That is what you get here. And then you have the cheerleading cliche. Now, I'm, I was a cheer, okay, I was kind of a cheerleader. I did, I didn't do it with my school. I did it otherwise. But, like, again, you had your stereotypical cheerleader. The very peppy and preppy and everything is good and happy and I love high school. Like, I didn't like high school. I don't know many people who did. People who liked high school clearly didn't know about, like, just 
were kidding themselves. I, high school was just high school. You did it, you got out, you moved on. But she's your very happy go, feels like the world centers around her, full of herself girl. Now she's not like a terrible person. She's not a, she's not really a brat. She's not overly self-absorbed. She's just been raised in this bubble that like of just life is in the moment. Life, like high school is this big important thing and like everything important in life is gonna happen in high school. That's who she is. But again, she's that cliche. She's that stereotype. Just like Varen is the mysterious, dark, jerk, goth boy. <laughs> like, their characters are enjoyable, even if they are cliche. Um, so they get put together for a project. And then, see, and Isabel decides to keep it a secret from everyone because she's like, I don't want anyone to know I'm working with the weird goth kid. <laughs> she doesn't tell anyone. And of course, that makes everything worse. Now again, tell me this. Like... So, cheerleader's got a boyfriend, Brad. I, I didn't like Brad. Brad's just a jerk, he's full of himself. Again, he's another cliche. He's that full of himself, egotistical, macho, brute football player. The one that, you know, like the head cheerleader and the quarterback, they're together. You know, it's the cliche, again, this book is just so full of everything that you see in, like, teen movies, like, girly teen movies. <laughs> But I love this book. Like, I'm not bashing it. Like, it's a good read. It's worth reading. I recommend it. But I gotta talk about the things that were just kind of like, why? Um, so she hides that she's got this project. And like, all of this happens pretty early in the book. But like, the boyfriend freaks out. Like, she didn't choose to work with him. There's nothing going on. Why are you freaking out because your girlfriend's partnered with the weird dude? Like, yeah, it's a little strange, but like, she didn't choose it. But like, it leads to this spiral of events where like, her friends and her boyfriend are just total jerks to this guy because she got put together on a class project. Tell me this, does this happen in real life? This happens in real life, what is happening to humanity? <laughs> that you think you need to be freaking out because your best friend or your girlfriend is partnered with someone that's not in your clique. Again, are cliques still a thing in high school? I know in my high school there was kind of cliques, kind of. I use that term loosely. Like there were definite groups. But I wouldn't say there was like the preppy, preppy kids and the goth, like that wasn't a thing. But there was clear like friend groups. But like, are these, are these cliques and things really, do these things actually happen in high school now? I want to know. If these things happen in high school, will you tell me? Because clearly either I live in a bubble and I never experienced these things myself. Or this is just once, like, we've created this idea of what high school is. And now it's just in every young adult fiction book that it has a high school. <laughs> Because I've never heard of this actually occurring in a real high school. It happens in, like, every teen movie, but not in real life. But if it's happened in your school, I'd love to hear about it. That's just, like, I want to know how that happens. <laughs> okay, I gotta say one thing, though, because someone made a very funny comparison. So if you took this book, you took out the Edgar Allan Poe, the creepiness, the dream world, the demons, and everything that's going on, you took out the fantasy part, you would have a cheesy... Disney Channel original movie, and not a good one at that. <laughs> like, I love Disney Channel movies, I watch a lot of them, and I could see this being a Disney Channel movie if it didn't have some of, like, the darker side to it. And that is what redeems this book. So, last project, it's an English project they have to do on any author, and Varen chooses Edgar Allan Poe because he's kind of obsessed with the author. Um, because, again, this is gonna have some spoilers, guys. <laughs> if you don't like spoilers, you should have stopped stopped a long time ago. Um, so Varen has this weird writing ability. His writing is now connected to this other world, this dream world, and he's created these demons called Nox. They're really cool. They are creepy as heck, though. Like, we got some, like, there's this guy named Pinfeathers that he creates, I guess, he's a knock, and, like, he's got this spiky red hair, and he wears all black, but, like, half of his face is missing, and part of his body's missing. Like, who comes up with this? Like, what high school kid comes up, like, it, it's not even that he came up with, like, demons as it was, like, how detailed the world he creates is. Now, and here's the other thing. The world that Varn has created is the same world that Edgar Allan Poe either found or created himself. I think the idea is the world always exists, and it's ruled, and seriously, this is a big spoiler if you don't want the biggest spoiler of the book, don't listen further. The biggest spoiler is, the ruler of this world is the demon Lilith. Yes, I have another Lilith. I didn't do that on purpose, I forgot that Lilith was a thing in this one. Like I had Lilith and Angel Fire, and now we have Lilith and Nevermore. 
Lilith is the ruler of this world, but Varen has stumbled upon this world because of some supernatural ability. And Varen shares that ability with Edgar Allan Poe, who also could write things into existence. Isabel gets written into this world by Varen. I mean, she's, our, she's a real person, don't get me wrong, she's a real person. But then he writes her name so then she can see and, and, um, oh, what's the word? She can see and participate, be a part of. She's connected to this old, this dream world, this demonic realm. It's actually a really cool place. When she goes there, she finds, there's the woodlands, which is just this dark, creepy woods, because, you know, you gotta have a dark, creepy woods. And then there's part of it, which is actually, like, based on the stories of Edgar Allan Poe. Like, she walks into, um... The mansion from the mask of the red death and she's walking through all the chambers of the different colors and like she's approaching midnight and there's the clock that's constantly going off every hour she goes past the oh the uh, i can't remember it's the one it's the edgar Allan poe story uh, i can't think of it right now she, she goes past multiple the main one is mask of the red death which is another reason i like this story i love mask of the red death it is my favorite edgar Allan poe story there's also, like, the constant thing with ravens. Ravens are a big thing in this. Um, you see them, like, everywhere. And then we've got the character Reynolds, which I learned, after, like, while reading this. So Reynolds is actually a part of Edgar Allan Poe's real story. Like, apparently when the real, actual Edgar Allan Poe was dying, he was calling out for a guy named Reynolds. Reynolds is in this book. Reynolds is a character in this book. Now, again, like, there's so much speculation on the, like, disappearance and life and end of Edgar Allan Poe. And, like, there's the idea that this person has created a theory. Like, that's what this is. It's a theory about what happened to Edgar Allan Poe. Is it happening to Varen? How is it all connected? How is, like, there's this alternate reality. It's really cool. This dark, demonic dream world is really cool. I love it. That is what redeems this book. Also, the writing style. It's very elegant, it's very, like, it's still a young adult, it reads very easily, it reads very simple, but it's elegant, it's very descriptive, the pacing is really good, the dialogue is believable, even if, you know, the whole high school cliche thing, like, oh my gosh, I'm serious, if you've ever had any of these cliches happen at your high school, or you know of a high school where these cliches exist, I'd love to know, I just, every time I read about these things happening, like, the horrible cafeteria scene, is that a thing? Is there really this whole idea that, like, people just watch the populars during lunch? Is that really a thing? I never did that. But I was also the girl that loved reading books, and I just sat down at a table and read books all a bunch. I didn't care who was around. But that was another thing. Like, I, you, this book evokes emotions. There are so many times that Isabel walks into, like, horribly humiliating situations. Or, like, she gets so terribly embarrassed. And, like, if you've ever watched a movie and, like, you sense that embarrassing moment is coming, you're just like, oh, I don't want to watch, but I'm going to watch. And, like, I'm watching, but I'm not watching. That happens so many times in this book. And because of it's, because it's so well written, like, you get that feeling. Some books you're like, oh, well, that's embarrassing. Ha, ha, ha. And, like, you kind of breeze past it. But this one you're like, oh, my gosh, I feel so bad for you. But also she kind of brings that on herself a lot of the time. All right. That is all I have to say about Nevermore. Next time I'll be talking about... In Shadow, it is book two. Um, again, stunning cover. Stunning. All of them are really cool. Um, whoever came up with this cover art was really, really creative. All right, but that will be in a couple weeks after Valentine's weekend. For Valentine's weekend, um, Valentine's Day is not technically book club day. It's the day after. But this is, the, this is one of those times I'm actually choosing the book because I want to do something more intentional. Um, at first, I thought about doing, like, a romance that I really like. I thought about doing something like Pride and Prejudice or Sense and Sensibility, but then I kind of went against that. I actually thought about using these because this story does eventually take place right around Valentine's Day, but again, then I drew it randomly right beforehand, so, you know, couldn't do that. So what I am doing is it's going to be a double feature next week. It'll be a slightly longer video, maybe. I'm going to be talking about two different books that kind of have the same theme, kind of. You'll see. So one of those books is The Beast Within. It is part of the Villain series by Serena Valentino. It is not the first book in the series, but I've been told that at least the first couple books of this series you can read out of order, and it doesn't really, like, affect the plot. Like, you don't learn too much. Like, you're not spoiling things by reading it, by reading book two before book one. I think later on in the series you are supposed to read in order, but the first, like, I think three doesn't matter too, too much. But we are reading The Beast Within, 
I have had this book sitting on my shelf for such a long time. I got it as a gift, I think, two or three years ago, and I've just never come back to it. I forgot about it. So we're going to read that. The other book we're going to read, that I'm going to read, you should read too, is As Old As Time, a twisted tale, one of the twisted tales, and the premise is, what if Belle's mother cursed the beast? So both of these are based on Beauty and the Beast, which is one of my favorite stories. It's one of my favorite Disney movies. I just, it's one of my favorite fairy tales. It's one of those fairy tales that's not as horribly disturbing as others. I mean, there's still some disturbing things to the original, don't get me wrong. Like, all of the original fairy tales are pretty darn creepy and dark. But this one, I don't know, I always like this one the most. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I watched a lot of different versions and read a lot of different versions as a kid. And I loved the Disney version as a kid. But it will be The Beast Within and As Old As Time. I will be discussing both of them, and I'm also going to be getting more into the villain series and more of the Twisted Tales, now that I've discovered they exist. I'd heard of them, and I finally did some research, and I was like, these seem really good, because I love Disney. I am a very big Disney fan, so now I have a bunch of the villains books and the Twisted Tales, so those will be added in more and more as I randomly draw them. But I wanted to start with these, because I heard they were really good, and very di like very different like I've heard that there are a lot of similarities there's some differences and I'm gonna talk about them next week so I will see you in the next book club bye